Reef here. Um, I hope everyone's having a great Friday. Um, so on today's episode of Coral Fridays, um, I went and I picked up uh, two new specimens today. Um, first off, the first specimen, uh, one of my subscribers left a comment below asking if I could find a certain coral and he'd like some information on it. So the first coral that I got today was actually, it's a torch, a torch coral. It's a beautiful coral. They have, uh, they have, you can have many different heads. They have uh, tentacles and sweepers. Um, so it's a very beautiful coral. I have it uh, floating and acclimating right here. It's been in there about an hour. Um, but the other, the other specimen today, I'm not going to show you guys. Um, this one's going to be for a special episode that I think is they'll definitely uh, benefit and help uh, a lot of people with an issue that they're having. So I'm going to save that on the back burner. They'll be coming up very soon. But we're going to focus on the torch coral today. So it's been acclimating for a bit. Um, so it likes to be lower in the tank. Um, it likes moderate light, moderate flow. So with the torch coral, you'll want to put it in an area where you don't have as many corals because you want to remember it's aggressive. So at night, its sweeper tentacles will, will come off its body about an inch further than you see during the day. So any, anywhere that you have a coral and the sweeper tentacle can float in the flow and latch onto another coral, it will slowly eat away its skin and kill your coral. So you want to make sure and keep it a distance from all your SPS, LPS, anything that it can latch onto. So yes, if you want to get really good color and you want it to really survive and take off in your tank, feed it uh, weekly, feed it some, uh, some brine shrimp. They like to eat that. You can feed them with a, with a baster or a, a coral uh, feeder. So that's some information on the torch coral. It's a very, uh, it's a very beautiful coral. Um, I, I like it because you get a lot of flow in your tank. That's a really great piece. So I hope you like that. I'm going to show you that. Um, the applications I'm going to do to, uh, to attach this coral to the rock here. I'm going to place it actually on the left side of my tank. I have a great area where there's not much coral going on. So that's where I'm going to place this one. Um, so I ended up picking up some more, uh, it's called Aquascape uh, Putty, Epoxy. It's great. It's two colors again. You have green and purple. You mix them together in the combination. And then it looks like coralline algae in here. So if we just open the two packages, it comes with the uh, with instructions how to do it. So that's, that's the name of it guys if you want to get some. So it comes in two packages. It's two mixes and you got instructions. So you got your purple and your green. So you take off how much you want to take, say three quarters or an inch. You take the two pieces together and you and you rub them together and you make them so you see they're completely pink and you know it's good to go. So I'm gonna use that and then I'm gonna use the Corifix uh, glue. That really works really well to hold on to. So what I usually do is I, I take my coral at the end of it, if it's skeleton, and I'll press it into this uh, epoxy and make like an imprint and then I'll put glue in that imprint and place the coral back into it and then mold the epoxy onto the rock. So now it's really nice and sturdy so when that dries, the coral can't get knocked off. Because I know with my fish, I think they're like doing some kind of uh, coral moving games in there. They like to grab corals when I'm at work and move them around. That's really, really gets really sickening sometimes. So I'm gonna take the coral uh, down to the lab. Um, we're gonna do a pre-dip uh, on that and make sure we get no pests in the tank. So we don't want to get any flatworms because some torches and hammer corals, you can get a certain kind of flatworm on there. They're very, very clear and they're really hard to see to the eye. So that's make sure you always coral dip your, uh, your corals before putting them in your tank. I use Revive from Julian Sprung. It's a really great product. So just make sure you got no flatworms on there. They're very clear. They're very hard to see. Sometimes you can see them underneath uh, T5 lighting. All right, guys. So let's take uh, we'll take the coral down to the lab, and we're gonna get in the revive coral dip, place in there for about 15 minutes, and see if we have any pests. And then we'll bring it back upstairs here to the 220 gallon uh, display tank, and we'll mount it up and show you where it's mounted and uh, tell you. All right, why. guys. So made it down to the lab. Um, so I got my uh, my revive by two little fish by uh, Julian Sprung, 9.99 local fish store. Stuff works great. You guys have seen before that I use this on all my corals. Um, I got my water all measured out that we're going to need to do the mix here. And we got our and we got our torch, we got our specimen in there, you guys can see it. Um, it has uh, two, three heads on it right now. And it looks like one is actually splitting, so soon have four heads on this one. This is a really beautiful green. But one thing that I can't stress more is I find torches or uh, hammer corals or frog spawn, you really got to watch for flatworms. They're very hard to see, like the ones that are really clear. It doesn't look like they're there, but they're there. I've seen many in uh, other fish stores. Uh, if you look really close, you can see them just uh, slowly moving on top of the coral. I find if you look under T5 lighting, if you guys really want to see, you could ask your local fish store, turn the T5 lighting on, 
or anything with blue and you'll actually see those flatworms. So I stress, I stress, make sure you coral dip because you don't want them in your tank. So that's why I use the Revive and the stuff works great. So let's, we're gonna put this in the Revive right now, 15 minutes, we're gonna let it soak, uh, move the water around a little bit and see if any pests come off. And then we'll move it upstairs to the main display and then we'll uh, mount it up with the uh, epoxy and glue. There it goes. So let's, uh, let's place the specimen in, uh, into the coral dip. So we got it right here. So let's place it in. So I got it all uh, pre-mixed up. So it's in there right now. So we're gonna let that soak for 15 minutes. And uh, we'll see if we have any little uh, pests and critters come off this so coral. We got the, the torch. It's in the revive dip there right now. It's been soaking for a bit. This coral seems pretty clean. You guys, you guys can see any closer. You guys see anything moving? I don't quite yet. So this is a good specimen. It doesn't look like there's many pests or anything on it. So we'll give it a little bit more time and uh, see what the happens. specimen around a little bit more. Everything seems clean so far. That's a good, uh, trust me, I've seen one of my buddies, he got a frog spawn one time. And oh my God, you should have seen the flatworms around that thing. It was just literally covered. And if he would have put that in his main display, oh my God, it wouldn't have been very good. It would have been like taking over. And they're very hard to get rid of. There is things out there to kill flatworms, but it's really hard on your tank. So I'm pretty sure this is pretty much done there now, guys. So it's looking clean. I haven't seen one little pest come so off there yet. The coral's all ready to go. Um, one thing is good to do when you uh, use the revive dip, I will pour that mixture out and I will just uh, put some new water out of my tank in there, rinse it off some more, and then dump that out, and just do it one more time, so just so I don't get any of the Revive uh, mixture solution into my display tank. So it's always good to uh, rinse your corals before you put them in your tank. All right, guys, so let's take uh, this specimen upstairs, we'll get it mounted in the display tank, and then uh, we'll check it out under the blues and see how it looks. All right, guys, so I got the specimen right here. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take the epoxy. So I got the two epoxies open here. See, we got our green and we got our purple. So I, I figured out where I'm going to put it. There's a little crevice there. So I'm probably going to need about, I'm going to say about an inch, inch of the purple. So there you got your purple. And I'm going to take, the, the, you know, measure off the same amount. Take about an inch of that. So now we're going to have a really good gob so we can really get it into the crevice and on the coral. So we just take that. You see how it's two different colors? We want to turn that right into purple. So we'll do that right up. The stuff works really good. I find if I don't do this, my, my fish, they always try to pick on my corals and move them around. I hate that when you get back from work and you're like, oh man, you got to get your arm in there. The more you can keep your arms out of the tank, the better. So you guys can see that right there. It's pretty much, it's all purple now. So what I usually do, so I know where I want to do it. So I'll take the, the base of the coral skeleton, I'll shove it in, make an imprint. So you have your imprint. And what I'll do is I'll put glue in there, take the glue, mix it in, and then I'll place the coral back in here. So the coral glue holds better with the epoxy, and mold it around, and then find the, the, the location you want to put your coral. And you put that in there, and then you'll spread this around the rock. And you're gonna have a really solid piece. This dries underwater, you're good to go. No more uh, fooling around, and no more you know fish thinking they're having a fun time there. So I'm gonna go, we're gonna go ahead there and mount this up right now. Guys. All right guys, so we got the coral all mounted up. It actually went really well. I found a nice crevice, you know, to shove the epoxy right in there with the glue. So it was a really good application. It held really well. So I ended up mounting it here on the left-hand side. It's a really good location. So we got moderate light, moderate flow, lots of room. So at night when the, the sweeper tentacles, you know, they go out about an inch from its, uh, from its skeleton, longer than what you see during the day. So you wanna make sure it doesn't touch any of your other corals. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to end up feeding it some, uh, some brine shrimp there after, um, cause it's had such a, you know, a ride getting here to give it something to eat and it'll grow a lot better if you feed it at least, you know, every week, a few times a week would be even better. Um, and make sure you, uh, if you're dosing, you want to dose all your elements too. It really help that at all. So let's check out the coral guys. I got it over here on the left hand side. Um, I got my, uh, reef link open and um, we'll text it. We'll drop down the blues and go through the stages and see how it looks guys. All right. Okay, so there's the torch coral right there where it's a uh, low, moderate flow, moderate light. It's perfect. So I'm going to take my uh, reef link. I got it open right now and, um, we'll try to check the color. So you guys notice right now it's not fully open. You know, I just got it glued. So I'll do a little update later how it's fully extended, but I want to Give you guys the sort of the aspect of what's going on right now so i got my reef link open so let's uh let's start shutting her down here a little bit so let's take our reds down right to zero and let's bring our greens right down to zero bring them right down so it's starting to show up there now 
bring my cool weights down. So we're bringing them right down. So there you go. That's going to look really, really nice. So we'll bring down our blues just a little bit. We'll bring them down to 50. So you guys can really see the color pop in there right now. I'll try to zoom in for you. So you can see uh, the tentacles are starting to come out there now. So I'm probably going to give it, a, I'm going to feed it. It'll definitely like that. Any coral likes to be fed. I always feed my corals a few times a week. It really brings out their colors. But I can't wait to see it. You can see it's starting to let go there now. Tentacles are starting to come out. We've got the Vortec pumps on. Giving them lots of meat matter at flow. All right, let's try another setting, guys. So let's bring let's bring them all back up right now. Bring them up. So let's try some presets on it. See what we got here. So I got my reef link open. Let's go to presets. So let's go color radiance. Let's go polyfluorescent on it. So that really drops their things right down right now. You can tell it really, it really makes the fish look weird. See the fish? They're like orange. The polyfluorescence is pretty sweet. Makes your yellow tangs look like they're red. Definitely different. And there's our candy cane up, up there. So like our last episode we did, episode 11. It's doing really well. There's our cocoa worm from our other episode. It's doing really well. There's our brain coral. It's starting to encrust over the, the epoxy uh, as well. Around the edges there, you can see it's really starting to take off. So that's a great piece. So yeah, so the torch is looking really good, guys. So that's under the polyfluorescence. Let's see what else we got here. We can do another preset. What do we got? Reef Creations. That's a pretty nice one. There's the Duncan coral. I start off with two heads. He's about going nine to ten heads now. Frog spawn. Doing really well. So there we go guys, that's the torch. All right guys, so that's uh, today's episode of Coral Friday. Um, you know, thanks for tuning in and watching. I hope you guys uh, really like this episode. Um, for the subscriber that uh, wanted to see uh, the, the torch coral, uh, his name's Ryan Groves. Uh, thank you very much for leaving your comments. You know, thanks for subscribing. Greatly, really appreciate it. Um, if any of uh, the other subscribers would like to see any other corals go into the display tank, please leave your comments below. I like the challenge to see if I can find these corals and get a really nice specimen and uh, just give some information to you guys so we can all learn together. Um, I want to say thanks to all uh, my club members on uh, Farm Boy Reef Club. Um, greatly appreciate all you guys. Uh, it's been a great club. Uh, everyone's equal there. Um, I got uh, the Farm Boy Reef Apparel. It's up. It's live. If you guys want to get your shirts, it'd uh, be great. You know what I mean? We're, like, we're a team. The shirts uh, represent the team and the club. And uh, everyone sticks together. So, you know, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please subscribe and hit the like button. And uh, we'll move on to Coral Friday next week. You never know what I'm going to find. And I'll soon have my episode up of my, uh, my son's 20-gallon uh, tank that uh, i got to get, get at and uh, get everything all plumbed up. And it won't take long, but you guys will get to see that episode and everything that takes place. So thanks for uh, tuning in, guys. Have a great and safe weekend. And uh, happy 4th of July to all my uh, American friends out there. Uh, we just had Canada Day. It was great. So everybody play safe and have fun. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.